What's your go-to comfort food? Is it something your mother made or something you enjoyed at the corner diner? These are some of mine. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. Stay right where you are and I'll show you how to make them today on SoFlo Taste. This is South Florida. It's where I live and work. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. South Florida is more than sun, sand, and sea. It's a lifestyle of fashion, sound, culture, and of course, food. Food with taste from all over the world. Join me as we celebrate the food of South Florida. And the people who love it. Join me as we experience soap low taste. Good morning and welcome to SoFlo Taste and the Goya Kitchen here at J World in Coconut Creek. With what we've all been going through, I asked myself, what could I possibly do to make people feel better? And since I'm all about food, the answer was two words, comfort food. So today, I thought it would be fun and functional to make some comfort food. So let's get cooking. The first one I'm doing is apple cobbler. Couldn't be simpler, and it's a lot of the ingredients I bet you have in your kitchen and cupboards right now. So I have a mix of apples here. These are some Honeycrisp and some Granny Smith apples. To it, I'm adding some granulated sugar, some cornstarch to keep that nice and thick and bubbly, some vanilla paste, which is kind of like vanilla extract, same thing. And I've got apple pie spice. If you don't have apple pie spice, you can make your own, which is cinnamon and clove and nutmeg. Always more cinnamon to everything else. And then of course, some fresh squeezed lemon in there. Go ahead and mix all that up. And if you have other fruit you wanna to add to this, if you have dried fruit you wanna to add to this, whatever it is you have at home, everything is delicious in here. You can add some raisins, you can add some dried cranberries, dried cherries, doesn't really matter. Everything is delicious in a cobbler. So go ahead and find a baking dish and add this to your pan. You really want it to be pretty full. So the next thing we're gonna make is the topping. So for the topping, I really wanted to do a combination of brown sugar and granulated sugar, flour, just some regular oats, and then just a hint of cinnamon. We also have obviously, like I said, the apple pie spice in the apple mixture, so you don't wanna to get too spicy, if you know what I mean, but you definitely want to add flavor to everything. Just a pinch of salt, and then finally the butter. So go ahead and start mixing this together until everything kind of feels like it's good and grainy and well mixed and what the? Oh, hey, Hunter, what's what up? Are you doing? All just practicing culinary distancing, <laughs> making sure we're a good six feet apart. And, and we are. Are we, are we a good six feet apart? Yeah, yeah, we're good. What are you doing here, honey? I'm here to show everyone how to make hand sanitizer. You know, I don't have much. I have one in my pocket right now. So do I, but yeah, not right? everybody is so lucky. But okay. fortunately, we have a few things that you may already have at home, and that is aloe gel and alcohol. Now, to make hand sanitizer, it's fairly simple. The only reason you need the aloe gel is because alcohol is fairly harsh on your skin, so it's to help ease that, and it's an emulsifier of sorts. I have a scale to measure out the proportions. I have a bowl to do the mixing. If I have moonshine at home, would that work? Yes, if you have Everclear, if you have moonshine, if you have 71% isopropyl alcohol, any of those work. The only difference is there's going to be a different ratio of gel to alcohol. So 91% alcohol is the easiest thing to use because okay. it's two to one. But then when you get down to 70%, it's more like six to one. By the way, my crust is done. I'm going in the oven. You keep going. Okay. All right. All right. So I've got a Pyrex bowl here. You can use any bowl. I'm just using this one because it's clear. You can see what we're doing here. Uh, with my scale, I'm going to tune it to ounces, which we're on. And like I said, it's two to one with 91% isopropyl. It's the easiest one to make. So you simply measure out about an ounce here. Just, there we go, right there. Perfect. So now that we have an ounce of our gel, we're gonna do two ounces of 91% alcohol. Like I said, if you're using 71%, then you're gonna to want to use six to one. There are calculators online if you're not sure. Even if you're using alcohol of some sorts, like the kind you drink, you can look up uh, what percentage of alcohol based on the proof it is, and then uh, use those calculators to find out what you need to do. But this is the easiest one to show you here today. So now I'm gonna add two ounces of alcohol. And if you're gonna go over on one of the two, I would go slightly over on the alcohol, because remember, you have to have 62% alcohol for it to be hand sanitizer or to be having a sanitizing effect. And if you're looking for aloe, if you don't have it already and you're looking for it, you can find it usually by the sunscreen as a sunburn treatment. All right, so that's it. I've got 
two ounces of alcohol and one ounce of our aloe gel. And now is the fun but laborious part. I'm gonna stir this for a while. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come right back. That way Hunter might be done making his lovely solution for us. And my cobblers are going, but I have a lot more to teach you. So please don't go away too far. SoFlo Taste will return right after this. Welcome back to Comforting Foods here at SoFlo Taste. Hunter, you're still mixing that thing. Oh, I've been mixing it. How long does that take? Well, it depends. The biggest thing you really want to look for is that you break up all the little gelatin pieces. Uh, some of these will re-homogenize into kind of what you see in, uh, in bottled hand sanitizers, and others will never quite get there. Uh, I'm not a chemist, so I don't necessarily have the proper amount of glycerin and other things you need to make binders out of this. But the fact is, if it starts to re-homogenize, put it in a little squirt bottle, and uh, uh, the kind that pours out. Just shake it up. Yeah, just shake more. it up a little bit. Because you notice yeah. sometimes when you use regular hand sanitizer, you get a little liquid before you actually get to the gel no anyway. No Same no thing. No. And then if you have one that's more liquid like this one, you can make it in a little spritzer as well. Huh. Moving on to um, delicious stuff, <laughs> the edible, yummy stuff. Um, I'm making my daddy's favorite dish. This is eggplant parmesan. The one great thing is that eggplant has not been running out of the shelves, so it's still there, very available, and there's nothing yummier than this. And another great thing is that you can actually bread and fry the eggplant and have it sitting in your fridge for a few days, or you can freeze it. So you can actually build this anytime. For great eggplant, you have to slice it, and we slice this, it's about half an inch thick, we salted it and we put it on top of a rack and we let it sit for a good 45 minutes. And it's amazing, but there's a lot of liquid down in this pan that gathered from that salted eggplant. And then we washed the eggplant, squeezed it out, and just kind of dabbed it a little bit with towels, and here you go. So to bread it, it's rather simple. It's just flour, like so, egg wash, which is basically just eggs, and then I'm using panko breadcrumbs. I've added some grated Parmesan and some dried oregano to it to make it even more flavorful. And then you cook it in oil, like so. And once it's really nice and golden on both sides, you take it out and um, just season it up a little bit with some kosher salt. So it's pretty easy. Do you like eggplant, Hunter? I do, and this smells amazing. It smells really good, doesn't yes. it? And I haven't even started the Parmesan There's part Parmesan it, which more? is basically like an eggplant lasagna. Um, I can get down with that. Without the new, yeah, right? It's, <laughs> without the new, it's delicious. And I just feel like this is the perfect time for this type of a recipe. Sure. You know, everybody wants to feel good and comforted, and I can't think of anything better than food and love for those two things. I agree. So I'm just gonna do two more pieces, and then I'm gonna start layering it up. So when it comes to tomato sauce, I usually have some in my freezer, or of course, you can just open up a can of your favorite tomato sauce, or of course, jars, which I always keep as a backup in my cupboards as well. So I've heated up some of our favorite tomato sauce, and it's right here. I also have some grated mozzarella, as well as some fresh sliced out mozzarella. Um, to give a nice little difference. I also picked some basil, because I always have basil plants in my windowsills, so I picked some fresh basil for everybody as well. Can you smell the cobbler, Hunter? It smells really good. Yes, all of the smells in here right now are my favorite <laughs> smells, so are they? very good. exciting. Good. Cinnamon, bread, <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> okay, perfect. All right, so um, I've taken uh, a little glass baking dish, and I sprayed it down with a little bit of cooking oil just so that things don't stick too much. I don't think it's 100% necessary, but I thought it was maybe a good idea. I haven't salted my eggplant yet, and I wanted to pepper it just a little bit too to make sure that everything that we're loading up has really good flavor. I'm gonna start with the sauce. This is hot. I've heated it up just to make the cooking time even shorter. It's already pretty short, but a little bit warm tomato sauce to start out. Let's go ahead and layer some pieces of the eggplant. Yeah. Yeah? I'm about this. <laughs> you like this? <laughs> I never would have pegged you for an eggplant kind of a guy. All right, I'm gonna cut this one in half lengthwise just so to make it fit better. All right, so I'll add 
some of this grated cheaper mozzarella, some of the sliced better mozzarella. Is there a reason then, you mix the two? Um, different textures, different flavors. One of them is really salty and has a better meltability. The other one just has a good chewiness to it. Right. Um, the fresher one. So, and then the Parmesan is just yummy, right? So then throw a little bit of basil and then start again. So it's not too hard. I would invite you over here, but we are um, practicing our social distancing, or as you call it, culinary distance. I know, I get it. I'm over here. Okay. Um, but I would love you to cook with me. I am cooking at home, though, a lot with my family. We actually, on a recent episode of SoFlow Health, showed people some quick snacks that they can have um, instead of reaching for potato chips and things like that. Because when you eat high-fat, high-carb foods that aren't from whole foods that are processed, uh -huh. you're more likely to feel sluggish. And when you're already home, stuck at home, and feeling sluggish, sluggish, yeah, exactly. It doesn't really, right. it just compounds and isn't a good mood. But when you're eating homemade food or taking the time to make your food, uh -huh. it's so much better. We are home. We have to take advantage of this time together yeah. because once we all start getting busy, mm -hmm. you know, things right. change. Now is a perfect time to enjoy your family and cook together. Yeah. yeah, one of the bright sides is people often have excuses, oh, I don't have time to do this or that or the other thing. Well, now Guess you have what? some extra time. <laughs> you have some extra time. So a couple more pieces of that. Let's do some Parmesan. Okay, so I'm just going to do my last layer. I think you all have the gist of it, and then I'll put it in the oven. It only takes about 20 minutes. Everything just has to melt and get nice and hot. I'm excited. Thank you. Thank you. It's and, nice to see you. Oh, good to see you as well. Air hug and kiss. Uh, just for those of you at home that maybe made this or plan on making it, uh, remember not to use too much hand sanitizer. What you don't want is the drying effect that the alcohol can have on your hands. Whether it's one you made yourself or it's one you bought, you can start to crack your hands if they dry over time, which leaves them exposed, and then your skin's not doing its job, which is keeping the germs out. Okay, well listen, don't forget, you can see Hunter on Sundays at 12.30 yep. on SoFlo Health. Yep, every Sunday. We love you. We love you too. You're the best. You're the Stay best. healthy. I will. Okay. If you will. I will. Thank you. Come back to the Goya Kitchen at JA World. Michelle and the food. This is SoFlo Taste. Welcome back to SoFlo Taste. We're here at JA World in Coconut Creek. For information about JA World and what it does for our children, go to jasouthflorida.org or call 954-979-7100. Now back to our comfort food. I can't think of anything better than chicken pot pie. Man, that just spells comfort food to me. It's delicious and there's ways of making your time a little bit better spent when you're making chicken pot pie. We actually bought a rotisserie chicken or you can roast a whole chicken, or you can poach a whole chicken, and get rid of the skin and bones, and this is what you have, all the lovely meat that has all been picked. In the pan right now, I'm caramelizing some pearl onions, and they take longer than anything. So these are some pearl onions that have been peeled, and they have been caramelizing in the butter. They're beautifully caramelized, and they're already starting to get lovely and tender. So that's gonna be our starting point, and that's gonna also be the roux. I'm gonna make roux out of this as well. But to begin with, I'm gonna add some carrots and some celery and some of your favorite mushrooms. I was able to get some shiitakes. Go ahead and just cook everything. I like to get a little bit of color on everything, especially for chicken pot pie. And we need those mushrooms to really cook through before we go on. And by the way, this is a looser chicken pot pie in that I'm not actually forming it into a perfect pie. We've made this gorgeous dough, and this is a savory kind of a pie dough, and we just free baked it kind of free form the way it is, and we'll break it apart and serve it on top of our pot pies. This is just a little easier. You free form the dough, and it's ready to go. And all of your attention can really be put towards this recipe in the pot. For this one, you won't need to go into the oven at all, by the way. Just so you know, I have a little chicken stock on my right for when it's ready to go. It's nice and warm. All right, so the mushrooms are basically cooked. Uh, I'm gonna add just a little bit of flavoring before I start my roux. I have some very finely minced garlic and very finely minced shallot for a little bit more onion flavor. I'm looking behind me and I see that my cobbler's ready. You 
You know how you know it's ready? You see all the beautiful bubbling around it and all the apples have thickened and you have that cornstarch mix. So that tells you that the cobbler is ready as well as obviously the beautiful color on the top. It looks like my eggplant parmesan is ready too. And that's beautiful as well. Okay, moving back on to my chicken pot pie. So I can smell everything is cooking. The shallot and the garlic are definitely cooked. I'm gonna make my roux. I'm gonna put maybe two more. So far I have three full tablespoons of butter. Go ahead and add a little bit of flour to thicken this up. Now I don't like to use too much flour. I don't want my chicken pot pie to be too crazy thick, but you definitely want it to hold together. So once you have cooked out your flour, go ahead and start ladling in your chicken stock. And this will produce, instead of a bechamel, that would be with milk, this is called a velouté because it's with stock. And keep adding it until you have a beautiful, lovely little like cream sauce look to it without, of course, adding cream. You see how you have a, a gorgeous like gravy-like texture? That's what we're looking for. It's really important that the sauce is really flavorful because this is it. This is your one shot at making this delicious. So I would take a spoon and taste. We definitely need some salt. I'm using chicken stock right now. There's no salt in that. And some black pepper. Okay, here's the fun part of the chicken pot pie vegetables. It all depends on number one, what you can find out there. Number two, what you like. So I like to use any kind of green vegetable available and frozen stuff is great too. I love frozen peas going right in there with this. I found some snap peas. So I blanched these, you know, snap peas, they kind of look like snow peas, but they're fatter and sweeter. So those got blanched and diced up. Some green beans, totally available. And if not, you can use frozen as well. I even found some fava beans, which are one of my personal favorite things in the whole world. And then finally, um, herbs. I have a lot of herbs growing, so I have some chopped parsley and chopped tarragon both. I love tarragon with chicken pot pie. Tarragon and chicken are so yummy together. And then finally, mine needs a little bit of liquor. So whether you're gonna add a little bit of wine, um, it's up to you, but I have Madeira with me. I love Madeira. You put it in a little bit later in the cooking process. It will burn out the alcohol, but it just gives it such a lovely taste to it. It's, there's nothing better. You're burning out the alcohol right now, and all you're leaving is this beautiful uh, aroma that comes off of it. I think we're good. Now we're just ready for our chicken. So again, a whole roast or poached or rotisserie chicken. Uh, this one comes from Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market. Hi boys, they're my favorite. <laughs> you guys are the best. Check their availability online, delawarechicken.com. Putting that chicken in there and go ahead and shut your heat off. And this heat from our gravy and our vegetables is gonna be enough to heat the chicken all the way through. It's really hot in this pot. Come right back and I will show you how to plate this gorgeous chicken pot pie and top it off. You're watching SoFlo Taste, the number one food show in all of South Florida. I'm design expert Elena Capra. The SoFlo Hour continues with SoFlo Home Project next on Local 10. Now, back to Chef Michelle and her food. Welcome back to our comfort food show. So here we are, we have our beautiful chicken pot pie filling. It's so green, herbaceous. I can smell the Madeira wine and it's just lovely. And what's great is we don't have to go into the oven because we're done. So a lot for you, a little for me, and we'll virtual eat together, shall we? <laughs> All right, there you have it. 
Uh, you can crack this dough into however many pieces you want. You can even do a topper if you'd like. Kind of fun, no? Thanks for joining me today. I know when pressures of the day are getting to me, and we sure have a lot of pressures right now, there's nothing like relying on one of my comfort foods to make things better. Not perfect, but better. Now next week, I'm cooking for one of my favorite people, my son, Zach. With him being home so much lately, I have a lot of new outlooks and tons more experience for cooking with kids, and I'm happy to share them with you. That's cooking with your kids next time on SoFlo Taste. Now let's get a look in from Elena Capra. Good morning, Elena. What are you doing today on SoFlo Home Project? Hi, Michelle. Never judging a book by its cover is handy advice for anyone looking to renovate a home. Coming up on SoFlo Home Project, we learn how this beautiful property went from a small refresh to a total renovation. Thanks, Elena. Stay well. So Taste Buds, that's this week's show. I'll be waiting for you right here next week. Goodbye and stay well too. Good taste. Hot pie.